Hey, 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 everyone. Um, good day. Welcome again to Immigrant Tales. I'm excited to have you guys. I have a couple of guests for you today. I'll let them introduce themselves to you. So yeah, let's jump in and get the introductions. Ciao. My name is Efosa Imagunikaro. And I'm a proud Nigerian. Yeah, recently moved down to the UK, um, studied my master's and yeah, trying to live here for a while. So that's me. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot of self comment. My name is Janani Sarah. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Payos. To check out point of our, our flagship product. Um I live in Birmingham, UK. Thanks, John. Nice to have you, David. Yeah, um, my name is David Odoy. I'm a software engineer. Um, I live in Birmingham, UK, as well. Thanks a lot, David. Nice to have you too. Um, are we talking about? Are we talking about no, uh, and other so, places as well? So for now, the UK. I'll probably do another one with you about Malaysia. But basically, All the right. goal here is, you know, your sort of like experience in terms of like cultural shocks, struggles there in the UK. How you even went about getting to the UK? Um, if you've experienced racism, do you feel you know? Cultural shock. He was in a trek for this place. Ah, Jesus! <laughs> ah! Jesus! You can see their leg. Their leg. You, you, you sabi. I just looking at people. You can tell who has a cow doesn't have a cow. You see leg, <laughs> leg. People get big. The leg big past their, their head. <laughs> big, big leg, big. And it's but just, you just. Say, you say you go fit there. Awesome. You say you go fit there, John. Eh? I go to Birmingham last weekend. John see one woman for road. He say this woman are from London. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they so, trip for London. Forget. Say this woman are from London. I say, I say why? He say see here and why? Ah, they the trip. I am now, David. I, was it that they went to Arsenal? Yeah. Or, yeah, God, we're we're on one one bridge. See people they trek, 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 trek. They don't trek tire. Oh, I saw somebody's leg that John. day. I, I I just knew that this John, person. Wait. Trekking is a form of exercise. You know that, right? Yeah, but and I mean that's what I think not don't fit here. But check in Nigeria. Most love there are a lot of fat men and fat women back home in Nigeria. I mean, no, I beg you. You know if you compare fats, honestly, you know if, all those see, big belly. Our, our problem now, Bele, we know. For Nigeria, for yeah, Nigeria, people Bele. fat. But now for here, I know it's in obesity be. Now, you don't get any, and, and then I think in Nigeria, being being fat is, is like a status symbol. Like it shows that you're, you're, you're living the life. But yeah, it's not just, they're not just fat. And, and if you have a big tummy, everybody feels like it's a... You're it's making a money, yeah, you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, big boy, big boy, big tummy, you know that kind of stuff. No be lie, no be lie. But... I think it's an African thing, you know. Yeah, it's one, an African thing, actually. One time, there's one... I, I, I saw a, a YouTube video of a Ugandan man that said... A Ugandan said he's a Ugandan millionaire. He said that... How would you have time to go to the gym when you have to make money? <laughs> well, regardless of how your body is, if you make the money, no matter what, you get what you want. You get all the women that you want. But then, to be honest, going to the gym is not easy. I tried it, man. I couldn't just like the, the problem is you have your everyday work you're doing, yeah, and then you have to go to the gym. And then, the thing about going to the gym is you have to eat. I don't, I don't know how to explain. Like, you can't just like me now, normally, the way I eat now, I just eat randomly. I can eat random, like, I don't have to plan my food. But when I went to the gym, maybe the gym I went to, like, they put me on, like, they put me on certain diet, like, oh, I'll eat this, I'll eat that. I don't know. Yeah, first, I wouldn't give to me all that time. You saw those meals, those packets. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, put you, I don't have time for that because sometimes I forget to eat. I can't okay. go. Let me tell you, you know, gym, going to the gym for me is about, is about peace of mind. It gives me, it helps me to release those negative emotions i'm serious especially here in the uk if i wasn't going to the gym like maybe two or three times a week man i'll probably be really depressed wow because it helps Why? you to release those emotions those you know you have those this is what i'm trying to say now when you walk out you sleep fine you would you'll be tired you like you you feel alive again 
But so when me, you don't, let me if, let I, me if, start, if I let don't, me let me say if I don't, let me not say, let me not put it generally. If I don't, man, I'll be really depressed. I think let me start this conversation then with you know <clears throat> with mental health in the UK. You know, um, how do you how do you cope with it, Afusa? I'm sure you live very far from John. You so far probably live very far from most of the other people that you know. How do you cope with it? Man, it has not been easy. It's, it's been good. But the one thing that made it quite easy for me is that this is not my first place I'm migrating to, you know? Yeah. I've lived in Malaysia, I lived in Thailand, lived in Cambodia. I've, and anywhere you're moving to, it's like you're moving to meet different kinds of people. And I give myself the first six months, you know, because I know that during the, that first six months, you're just trying to understand that area, getting to know what and what is you know applicable and everything. And don't make sure that you don't beat yourself when you make a mistake. That's very important because you definitely make mistakes. What kind of mistakes? Like maybe uh, getting not be able to get jobs or then or meeting the wrong set of people and maybe entering to one problem or another that happened to me in Malaysia for the first season. Oh, ah <laughs> guy, you know before come again, talk come. <laughs> <laughs> <your> problem. <laughs> so so that first six months or one year, it depends. But it took me six months actually to acclimatize to uh, Everything in Malaysia, that's what I would say. But in the UK, hmm, I would say that it is more of the people here are more of, a, a, you know, they keep to themselves. Okay. It's a different culture from where we are coming from and where I've been. People, they don't care about themselves here. They are very selfish. It is just you, you, and yourself. It, it gets to the part that you even tell somebody good morning, but <laughs> I know they don't answer. Is that like a Europe thing or is it just the UK? So that, I heard the same thing about Germany also. They don't like, answer. You know, like, you know, like, they, they say good, you say good morning and they and they look at you like, why is this guy quitting me? Like, do you want something from me or something? Yeah. It's weird. But I, I, I had to make, I had to make a conscious effort that no matter if you answer me or not i will continue to greet you because i know it's a good thing i'll continue to greet when i see people on the road because i know it's a good thing and it's it's something that you shouldn't stop because it's not even it's not even for the person you are greeting it's for your own mental health as well because telling somebody early in the morning good morning will definitely show how your day is going to start as well is your day going to start good or bad so it's more of for you but more than the other person so is it the same thing for, for John? Yeah, John. Yeah. So I think we're talking about two things now. So the first is you spoke about mental health and the second thing about the people. So for mental health, for me, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe because I've been a myself person, I like to keep to myself. But when I whenever I get bored, maybe I have some free time and I'm feeling like I'm bored. I think I usually just go out. Or meet people. Either I go and disturb IZ or <laughs> I go <laughs> I go I go disturb some other people because I, I met I met I met a couple of people. Disturbing my cousin in Birmingham. Disturbing my cousin in Birmingham all the time. Yeah. So I I met a couple of people here as well. So some I met them at the gym, some just randomly, just from different places. Um, when I was looking for an accountant and all those kind of people. So, so sometimes, and uh, some of those people will become friends. So sometimes when I'm less busy, we just chat, talk. And then other times I just become myself again. I'm just focused on what I'm doing. Yeah, probably my work and stuff. So I don't really feel it when, I don't, I don't, I've not gotten to that point where I feel like, oh, I can get, uh, is it depressed? Is that the word? I, I, I don't, I've never, I've never got into that. I don't think I've ever experienced that. Then regarding people, like people's um, interactions, I feel like sometimes that's so that's so true. Like David Agel as well had that issue, you know, when he came here, would say hi to the people at the uh, what they call them, 
the people down at the reception downstairs, and then they will answer. He will be like, never in his life. He's never greeting them again. <laughs> 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 but then, yeah, but then initially, I didn't used to greet. Because me too, I like to just keep to myself. So I'll just pass. I didn't used to greet. So a friend came over. Williams came from, from Canada. I discovered that Williams, when he came, he was always, he was easily starting conversations with people because he was always the one to to greet them. He would greet them, but in the elevator. Usually people start trying to start conversation with me in the elevator. But I tried to avoid, I even tried to avoid getting to the elevator with people. But they would start conversation with, oh, how's the weather and all that. But I don't know. I'm just used to just keeping to myself. But Williams usually is one, like he was one always trying to initiate it. And I noticed that it was fine. We went to the kebab shop too. It was one initiating conversations there. And I realized that, well, maybe I could do this to so maybe to be nice. And so I end up just always nowadays, I just say hi to people. Hello, are you all right? You know, that kind of thing. Whether they answer me or not, it's fine. Sometimes some people answer, sometimes they don't. Interesting. So it's yeah. interesting. What is interesting is, you have a different experience from from Efusa in yeah, in, and I, I feel it's, it's it's more about it's more about in it varies based on where you're living. Okay, where you are based in the UK, it varies because if you're in London, you meet people who would actually you who you can have conversations with because people are people there are more open. Okay. If you're in London, then Birmingham. I've been to Birmingham as well. I think that people there are more open as well. People are more open, women are more open to conversations than here in Bristol where I am. So it also depends on where you are. I see. In your location. I see. Very, very important. I have a friend who's a doctor in Sunderland. <laughs> He's complaining every time that he needs to get out of that place. He's too young to be living there. This are, that kind of place is for like retirees. So just think about a young guy coming to study and gets to a place like Sunderland. You go mad. How much you? Yeah. Do? So, I, and and then and then I think it also depends on where you live. Like like, assume let's assume you live in in Birmingham. Now. It depends on where you live in Birmingham because I know some people who complain about the same thing you're complaining about, and they're also in Birmingham. For instance, Joy, you know Joy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Joy, yeah. She, she's complaining about because she stays in the outskirts. Yeah. So, because she's isolated anyway, so. So, so I think it actually depends on if you stay in, in a place like City Center where there are lots of people, you probably won't complain because you'll find diversity in that place. I need people yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, true, true. true, 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 true. I see, true. interesting. This is a huge contrast to here in Brazil where, like, literally everyone is happy to say hi to you anytime, any day. Like, literally, everywhere, people are like, you know, as far as you can speak a bit of language, bonjour, bonjour, they're like, you know, happy to say hi. And it even, even gets crazy while you're like in a, in a club or like in a night situation where you're with like your group and there's a different group here for some strange reason someone from the other group might just say something to one person in your group and it becomes three groups because like it's just people randomly don't even need to know you they just feel comfortable and it's in your face them. it's in your face you are enjoying the flex what can i see we can see it now I agree. You are shining. Yeah. I agree. But like, you know, how is how's the nightlife there? So Bristol, Birmingham, what's the nightlife for you guys there? How does it look? Um, the nightlife in Bristol is it's not as great because of, like I said, the differences. But it's not bad as well. Because when you go out, they have like different kinds of clubs, they have like uh, different kinds of areas, but very few. And there's a huge crowd. There's a huge Jamaican crowd here. Mm. There's a huge African crowd. But Africans, we don't go out. We always walk 20, seven days a week. Oh, yeah. We are walking. Here, you, you are working trying to make money. So when you even go out, you find few, especially it's only if there's this special program for to be a, an Afro uh event for the, for Africa or something. That's when you go and meet. Apart from that, going out like every week, like this weekend now, I'm not going anywhere because it's just like doing the same thing every week. You get no. so it's fun, but it's boring, and it gets boring in time. So it depends on the kind of year in Bristol. It depends on the kind of people you are going out with. That what makes it fun. But in Birmingham, oh my God, Birmingham is much, much better than here. 
when it comes to fun. I, I always go to Birmingham for fun. I was in Birmingham last week. Okay. Okay, yeah. John, please. Give us the gist. <laughs> Give us the, you know, the inside cook. I think, <laughs> to be honest, I, I think that, um, I think Efosa will speak more, more on Birmingham because I don't grow up much, but most times when I grow up, it's usually Efosa that, 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 that takes me out, actually. That drags me out. But, but, but Birmingham's night, nightlife is really good. Uh, I know it's not as good as London, definitely, but it's it's nice, it's it's fair, and <clears throat> there's a lot of things to do actually. There's so many things to do. There are clubs, there are different kinds of clubs depending on the kinds you want. There are bars, there's there's everything basically. There are the ones where you go and you only see people like you. There are the ones, there are the other ones you go. You see like the kind of music they play. Is just for probably white people or for them or for Caribbeans. In fact, there are even Caribbean clubs where they have different um, the programs. What I call the program today is for drum and bass, tomorrow is for yeah. Caribbean music yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there are also the ones where like it's a club, but then the club has the club has like four different clubs in the like the place has it's a club, yeah, but the club has four different clubs. So depending on the one the kind of music you want to listen to you go. So yeah, there are lots of things. There are lots of things to do there too. There's food, there are drinks. But what I've noticed is I mean I I didn't go out a lot in Nigeria. Like I wasn't a night person, but then definitely I still can tell some differences. I feel like um clubbing in Birmingham is still the clubs are, are the one the ones we have been to is sort of different from the ones in Nigeria. So it's not like yeah, it's just different, basically. People just want to dance, have fun, forget their problems. I don't know what problems they have, but you can see the way they dance. You can see the way they dance. Problems, just just you, want to be happy. Just, just the way the UK is, when you get that time to go and drink and have fun, you would want to yeah. go the... Go, you know, everybody's just dancing and go, dancing. And it's as if the music is too sweet. I can't, I, it, seems, it makes me feel like I don't, I don't like music. Go above the yeah, maybe I don't, I don't like music as much. So, so I think, I think this is very, very crazy. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe we from Nigeria specifically, because I could talk about the Nigerian experience, we try to be very measured at how we dance most time because even here, like people just dance, ah, not the first time, not the first time, first time ever asked me <laughs> one day. <laughs> I went to the club. Bro. I was I started dancing and dancing. It was in dancing competition with somebody in the club. They now formed the circle around the poster. They were not clapping. <laughs> I wanted to enter the ground. I was like, what is what is the problem? Oh, I love the axe. I don't know. Axe uh, Panky. Last week we went to one Nigerian oh, wow. Nigerian club in Birmingham. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, Spanky to me. The one you went. We asked Spanky went there last week, last weekend. After John left us, said he was going home. John is also, John is always a spoiler. So he's going home. He's going home. And Spanky said, "Ah, yeah, yeah, I don't want to go to another club." I, I, I told Spanky, "Please remember, man." Spanky, wait to this night never finished. Let's go somewhere. Let's else. go to this. Uh, let's, let's find somewhere else. So one, it's one of our friends that's a doctor. He called us that somewhere else. So we, we went to meet him. The cave. Oh boy, that place now you all the Yahoo boys say for this town. They were spraying money in dollars and stuff. The babes, all the African babes, that's where they are. I was like, I've never seen so much African babes in one place since I came to UK. But the music was good. Oh my god. We are spanky now. We rude. Everybody started coming to our to where we were to dance with us. <laughs> it was fun. That's that really even cool. someone had to bring fun for Spanky, like, please. <laughs> you are sweating too much. <laughs> I'm sure Spanky that usually would not dance a lot back in Nigeria. After yeah. missing Nigeria for a long time, most likely. Hey, Spanky, dance. Spanky dance. <laughs> Spanky so, dance oh. Another thing I'm just wondering, you know, what other like culture shocks did you guys experience moving to the UK? Like, you know, what other things did you experience? I was like, okay, this is different. This is completely different. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me is that um people give birth and marry very early compared to Nigeria. <laughs> oh, you see, someone is 18 or he's not yet 20 or just barely 20, already has a child, or they're already seriously dating, about to get married, or they're living together, they're moving together. It's so common, yeah. Or someone is 21, still in school, considering having her second child. Like, it's just weird. It's very hard to see a woman that is 20 
to 30 years old that is not a single model Do you it is very hard it's when you see that one person that is not a sing, that doesn't have a child and is not divorced you'll be like thank god mm -hmm. is that bad yeah interesting yeah yeah uh, and I think it depends, it, it goes along with the talk about their culture, their values. Yeah, like, I, I, I think it's, it's not just their culture, it's also the system. The system is built in a way that if you want to build wealth, you have to be married. Like, if you want to be successful, like, it just opens a lot of doors for you once you're married. So all of them, they sort of get towards that. They get towards always trying to get married. Yeah, so once you're married, it's easier for you to get more kids. You have to... To build wealth, you get like can do many things. Oh, interesting. So, like as a married person, you have a lot more access to do a lot more things. Um, mm. or someone that's single. Yeah. Um, yeah. Someone. Yeah. Not. Not like you can't do it if you're if you're not single. But it's just I think it's a bit more work for for you than if and, you're married. And the weather here is two extremes. So that very cold or very hot. There's no middle. Mm -hmm. Right now it's almost like three degrees in Bristol. Yeah, John was saying the same thing earlier. That's that's uh that's and cool. I don't understand. It's either very cold or very hot. What's going on? And there's no AC. And there's no AC. The they don't have AC in their houses. They don't have I, I, I don't understand. They don't they don't buy fans. So you know <laughs> it's very hard to it's it's coming down here, you have to prepare. And uh, like I said earlier, the main thing for coming down here, prepare your mind. You would have those times that you would be number one lonely but especially when you come here to study if you're maybe if you're working in a company and you have a company that you go to every morning you work it that's different but if you're a student it's more difficult because you have to work and study which is not that easy and you would have that a time that you would be alone you'd be depressed you it's going to be there because of the cultural shock people not easy to make friends even it's not even easy to make friends with your own fellow nigerians really down here. yeah because everybody's trying to look for something if it are to benefit from you mostly they will not talk to you Interesting. and the babies too the babies most of the babies are looking for white men to get paper <laughs> Wow. Whereas you guys, the guys too, just to look for person where they want to take whole body. Interesting. But the babes not gonna like whole body with you because you have nothing to offer. <laughs> so, so you now have to. You see, as I last week I, we went to I was I was with my last week and I was we were just counting. Is it like you see a black girl and a white guy, or a black man and a white girl? <laughs> It's very rare. Yeah, so I, I think Birmingham is just like that. I I, I feel like statistically it makes sense because I mean there are more white girls here than there are black girls. So 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 how fast, Spanky, how's your how's your what was it like joining, getting back to going to the UK? What was your experience? Let's be your shock. Uh, interesting for you. Um, I think I think quite quite a few things. But I think the, the thing you just notice is that okay, you just feel you just feel different. You know, every, most of people here are just white. That's the first thing they get. Then I think John has mentioned this thing before, but the first day I came here, God, I waka. I was walking, walking, walking. That London, that London rail system confused confused me. I almost missed my uh, my stop. Okay, I know that I, I know that I was going to stop somewhere. Yeah. But then after stopping there, okay, I need to locate the next train to take. I was just going up and down, climb up, climb down. Ah, if not for the fact that I could call John and give me direction, then it was just something else. The on that underground, that underground train was just caught me off guard. Interesting. Caught me off guard. It's, it's interesting because you know then continue continue, continue Spanky. yeah i think yeah i think the next thing that happened that same day is just the the ease of doing things although the, look at those things are, are just because i was new to the place and i was not used to that kind of system 
but then the ease of getting things done like i could i could pay for top even my nigerian card i paid for the um train tickets and all of that bought sim cards like seamlessly no stress just like that nobody asked me for uh i think i think they asked me for my passport but i can't remember exactly but i did not spend the time i spent to buy sim card in kenya was longer than the time i spent to buy sim card in in the airport in the uk in the us in the uk right there. wow that's cool yeah that's amazing um, at first, I wanted to tell us about the food, then we'll probably come back with Spanky. At first, how far what was your experience? I do. Ah, which was looking very different on my phone, my on my phone, and when I was using the laptop. Oh, okay. oh boy, this is your the beard. Hi, Odogu. You, you can't blame it when you are Odogu. touched by Brazilian. <laughs> when you are touched by different spices <laughs> of uh, hello, yeah, condominiums. <laughs> so yeah so how far what was the what was the experience with food for you man so the food though me i cook yeah i know you cook man so i love to cook so i i i, I always eat at home mostly but the foods yeah is um same thing that we eat back home the english food english breakfast and chicken and all that it's not it's not not that different and you have like Asian food as well. You have Asian restaurants, Chinese restaurants. You can buy food from. It's not so. It's not. It's not that different than other places that you you travel to. It's good. And you and the good thing is that you have Af- African shops, especially around here. You have African shops that you can just go and buy, and they are not too expensive. I would say you That's buy cool. you buy. Your beans, like dinner, I just I made I made rice and peas this afternoon. Sharp, sharp. Yeah, no, no darling, you know. You sharp. buy you buy your beans, buy your rice, buy your, your pepper. Cause yeah, they don't eat pepper. So if you go to all these places like Lidu and all that, that, that thing they put hot pepper. If you if you pull the whole thing for mouth, you, you know, go nothing will happen. Nothing will happen to you. Okay. But when you have to go to the Nigerian shop to buy pepper. Mm-hmm. What's the so name of the shop? Nigerian mm-hmm. shops. Mm-hmm. I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. uh, but the, it's just normal shops that they have like on the road by the roadside. On, ah. it, yeah, it's not like a big, like the normal shops that they have on the roadside. Like, yeah, normal small supermarkets and all. Oh, okay. yeah. So, okay. if you're living, you living in a Bristol, you have it in Fish Ponds, you have it in Easting. Yeah, so those are the two places you have. That's where you have you find most uh, black people as well. So yeah, it um, it's normal. And you have like an Nigerian restaurant as well in in Eastin, which is really nice. It's owned by Biniman, my brother. Yeah, how expensive? Very nice it? guy. It's not too expensive really, because you will eat a nice Nigerian meal for for five pounds, and you also eat. You eat better meat, better fried uh, 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 goat meat for five, six pounds, which is not expensive. Really. It's not, I'll pay that for, and you not step down with one big bottle of Heineken or your. Hey, my God. Okay. You, 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 you know what I'm saying, bro? My God, kill me. You know what I'm saying? 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 Oh, that was like, is, is this in, in Bristol? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's just yeah it's it's yeah and it's really nice. Have you noticed that the African st- like I don't know for for us here I feel like the African stores are more expensive. Even like the African food is a little bit more expensive. Yeah, but yeah, it's not expensive. When I yeah. tried it, I tried this uh, Bini guy where I've been to this uh, is, and it's called um uh, what's the name of this place? It's in fish. It's been Eastern as well here, but I uh, I remember the name soon. It's a really nice uh, place to go to, to eat. Ah, uh, it's really nice. It's not expensive. The drinks are not expensive. They have Nigerian drinks. They have they have a uh, star. They have star. They have uh, Nigerian Guinness. They have all those Nigerian drink. Nigerian Heineken. They have all those things. And like if you spend, you yes. if you spend, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you spend ten pounds, you chop well and. Bele food. Uh, pounds. Just you chop or oh, bele food. You drink one bottle. Sharp. It's one, one bottle to step on down. George. Which is not. Lord's. Which is not. One cold. 
the mortuary standard will not be here. I, I probably I don't talk this in several times. I'll repeat them again. Man. My first three months here, dude, I literally couldn't eat anything. I was eating burger. Yeah, it was uh, first, uh, bad. It was so bad. I was eating just it was bad, just burger. It was bad. Spanky, don't tell me your own story. I know you're close to John. Maybe John is showing you the way, but you know, <laughs> what's your story? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's showing me the way now. Showing me. I'm, I'm eating very well. You can see that my skin is getting better. Yeah. Now, yeah. All the things that John is showing me. Uh, Opposed to John. <laughs> Saint John. 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 No, 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 no. No, no, he's not. He's not about to John, though. He's Chef, Chef John. Chef John, yeah, that's true. That's, <laughs> true. John, John, like, that's true. John, John, that's true. John, that's true. John, John cooks Ooh, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, for the, I've been to a local restaurant. There are places here that there are places here that they wrote um, for rent or business. Just open up and buy chairs. Sit there. My guy, John. You don't need to cook for here. Please do the. We, we invest. We are ready to invest. <laughs> well, that's you guys are lucky. You guys are lucky in Bristol because here in Birmingham, I want to buy a white rice and and assorted meat too, like normal meat too. I was spend so I was spend twenty pounds, and the white rice is small. Like it's not even fancy rice because I'm I'm here on delivery rule. So the white rice is seven ninety nine, and I mm. bought it before. It's just Why small. you buy white rice? Why are you buying white rice online? No, it's African food now. I have white rice and stew. Well, what? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. okay yeah. let us do. Let us do swallow. Let's let's do swallow now. Let me let me go to, go and check Egusi. Um. A goosey is level 99, which is 12 pounds. Then let me now get one swallow yeah, with it. It's called uh, Agape. Agape is in Eastern in Bristol. Okay, that's the place what I you say? to get it from. Yeah, Agape, yeah, Agape in Bristol, yeah. It's really nice. But, I'm looking but, for the, but yeah. it's not but the pound of yam is not that pounds. much if you are buying the yeah. ingredients and cooking yourself, Sha. So it's like 18 pounds, basically. It's not much. Just... Food is, yeah, I went there the other time. I went there last month or something. I even went there with the babe. It wasn't that expensive. I ate and I ah, that goat meat. Why oh, you enter brain? <laughs> yeah, no, the food is nice. Basically. When I go enter brain, then when you chop goat meat with better cold bottle of stout. Interesting. Sharp and mm. Fun fact. Fun fact. When I <laughs> when I came here. You know that time when I was in Nigeria, I was learning different delicacies, trying to expand my cooking, my culinary right, skills. Exactly. <laughs> I can't come here now. I can't start to cook. Cook, 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 cook. So <laughs> that was when I learned that, oh, you don't have to use, uh, if you want to make some soup, you don't have to use ugu from Nigeria. I could use whatever, the spinach or something, you know? I watch all those YouTube videos. But I discovered that sometimes, maybe this, I think the last straw for me was one day, Efosa and uh, Efosa, Isaac and Joy came to my house. I made um, turkey. So I made the turkey and Joy ate it. Just like, you don't put um, this thing in this thing, like salt. I didn't put salt or <laughs> no, enough no in this. That was that day. I just said, let me just take a break. Because after after cooking, I'm always so tired. <laughs> so I'm not even able to eat the food. And then someone comes and says that I don't put salt in this. I took a break. And then I started doing... Um, you know hello food hello fresh actually uh -huh. so i started doing hello fresh i did hello fresh with a bit i thought i mean this food is not for me it's just rainbow food i can't continue with this and i still have to cook the rainbow food though it's not like they've made the food already oh shoot so yeah i still have to make the food they just bring the box and then I, i'll not be cooking them then i now took some time off from cooking and then i started i think i started again when spanky came so I just cook food we eat and it's been nice I've been, like, I've been a lot better. Don't really try yeah. to impress me. I mean, it's fun. Uh, Who they impress you? I don't understand. I don't understand why. <laughs> you did for me last week. Did you did for me last week. Eh? Did you did for me last week. Who won't cook for this one? It's not your book. You don't need to take care of you guys. I mean, we'll have a free the guy. Give us a free to read. He's trying to make sure you get the best time. It's Alec. Please, what's going on? You know how, how it is, but then it's fun. Sometimes you just want to do something that is not work, and then you don't want to go out. So cooking too can sometimes help relieve the stress. So I think I have another question though. Um, 
Um, you guys have been there a lot more. Spanky, have you experienced like racism there in London and the UK? What was your experience with it? No, nah. no, nah. at least, at least not yet. Fair, at least not yet. I, you know, I think for me, it's just strange that you're in a different place where everybody has seen are mostly white. Okay, that's the only, that's the only thing, but. No, no, no racism at all. Not they, are yet. More, they are very conscious of it here. So, they, before you see someone openly do it to you, before you see somebody doing openly doing it to you, be very hard. They are very not not that they're not racist too, but they can be sued, they can be arrested and all that. Yeah. So they are very like I've been someone. When I was looking for a house, I put an ad on Gumtree. I somebody called me and said he wants a black man to be fucking every day and put me inside his cupboard. Are you serious? Yeah. No, I'm not joking. Oh. So, so wow. he, really? he, he, a man, a man called you. He wants a black man. Yes, okay. that you put inside his cupboard and you using as slaves. Having sex with the person every day, yeah, I'm not joking. So, they are, they are, so that's not that it's because you're not seeing it open. That doesn't mean they're not they're not there. They are there, but because of the rules, the laws, like the you know how the rules and regulations are in this place are very strict. And if you are being openly racist to someone, you can be arrested. Wow. Yeah. So that's, they, that's why they. That's why they will not do it. But that, that doesn't mean they are not racist. Because sometimes when, when you're working, like I, I've worked with different kinds of agencies and doing all this care and support work. When you go to all those homes, the way they even, the way they use it to work, like, like say you be khaki, you go understand, say, man, these people, they don't want to talk to you, but they're not the, not the racism be this. Mm. Yeah. So, John, John, our boss now, John works from home, doesn't leave his bedroom. So, you know, how will he notice this? John, has anything happened like that to you? <laughs> no, no, you, you won't. I have experience though here, and it's strange because one of the reasons why I chose to come to Brazil was because I felt like, you know, hey, um, it has no. a lot of mix of different races. Like, you know, it has. Do you know why yeah. you were experiencing it there? The rules and regulations there are not, the laws are not that being followed and not, are not strong like here. I guess so. I, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. If I'm talking about racism now in Malaysia, uh, I, I would have, I feel, I feel that book. Because that place too is just like, it's just like the rules and regulations are just like Nigeria. They're not really, nobody cares. But in the UK, that's what I'm saying. They, they, they would, arrest you for doing that. Interesting. And you pay, you pay, the person that you're you being racist against can even sue you. Get a fine pay. Yeah. Get a fine. Yeah, so they are, they are more careful. But in a place like Brazil, who sends you? Yeah, because my own case was, I went to a restaurant to eat. This was like maybe my first week or two, first week here, first week here. You know, after eating burger for a while, I was like, man, I need to eat some, like real food. So I yeah. took myself out to like one of the restaurants close to where I live. And I went in and apparently I sat down. Obviously, it was it because where I stay is like filled with a lot of you know, white people. I know Brazil has the largest amount of black people outside Africa. So they, they do have a lot of black people, but actually the black people in Brazil are not so are not doing well, even in the country. So um where I stay has a lot of like white folks. So I just went in to eat in the restaurant. And when I sat down, I looked at the menu, used my Google Translate, so I translated the whole thing. Then I called the guy and told him, like, this is what I want to eat. The guy looked at it and went out. Now, at this point, I had no understanding of the currency, even how expensive what I had selected was. You understand? To me, it wasn't even like it was expensive. So the guy went in and came back and told me that I have to pay first if I can go and bring this. Wow. Really, that did not even see that. I didn't even see that a big deal. Anything, yeah. You understand? But you know, I just told him that no problem. Bring get your machine. I just paid. But I realized yeah. that everyone there, no one is paying before John. <laughs> before, before 
<laughs> you understand? Before the whole thing, before like eating their food. So it was after I finished eating that I realized that okay, this is you know, this is a very, very funny situation. But yeah, you understand that kind of thing. But, yeah. Did you conf- did you confront them? Dude, I don't oh, have the now I understand what you mean. So they took money from you. Yes. Before the yeah, end just, yeah. just, just yeah. to ensure that, oh, so that this person Yes. Okay, so so I, I understand what you're saying. I feel like I've heard people say it here, although I've no experiences. So I met a friend some time ago who also stays here. So he works as a is a product designer, but not product designer in tech. Like he designs things like TV, cups, bicycles, and stuff. Yeah. So he was telling me how there's something like structural racism in the UK, but I don't know. He, you know, he's the one who experienced it, who probably has experienced it. I mean, I've not experienced it, so I can't really explain as much as him. But he's talking about, he was basically talking about how you and probably your white colleague will be in the same position, but your white colleague will probably move faster than, than you would. And you guys are putting in the same effort, or even you're putting in more effort, but oh, the rest will probably get promotion for you. So I think that the kind of thing they explain is also the same thing. So they just assume that you probably won't have, or you're not smart, or you don't even have enough money, or whatever. Yeah, I guess. See, bro, uh, bro, let me, let, me, let me say this. This is why we have to develop our country. Because your country is your country. Your home is your home. No matter where you go to in the world, you will be, you will find racism and you you will find, they will definitely want to favor their citizens before they favor you. It is normal. It is only in Africa that you will see that they want to favor a white man before they favor a black man. Uh, it's a, a black man course it's only in africa you see that happen mm-hmm. everywhere in the world you go to they favor their their they give their people jobs before they give in the internationals so it's a good thing what they're doing for their people here so we should emulate that in our own place i hear you thank you brother um let's think let's talk about change gear a bit um let's talk a bit more about you know how you guys Got your the Jackma from Nigeria to the UK. What was the process for? I, I think I know, but you know, it just helps us all of like talk about it a bit more and give some detail. And I know there's a difference between Efusa's process and John and David's process. So um let's start off with you know Efusa. Let's start with your process because yours is a lot different. Yeah, so I came to um through masters. I came for a master's and I'm almost done. So you get this is and there's an agent in Lagos that did it for me for free. Oh, for free. Yeah, they get commission from the school. So for how many people they bring to the school. What's the name of the agency? Do you want to tell people about it? Yeah, uh, Lamstone Consult. Okay. Lamstone Consult is in Lagos. Cool. So basically, you you went to them and they helped you with all the process for free. Yeah, from the beginning to the end, until I got my visa. That's splendid, man. But um, then you yeah. cover the then you cover the fees by yourself. Yeah, you but you have to. The first thing is that when the the is a very short process. It's not a long process. When you tell them you want to go to school, there's three different kind of schools. You pick your choice of school and your course. They tell you the requirements, you send them the documents, you send them, they'll send you the documents that is required, you send them those documents back, and they tell you the fees and the deposit you have to pay. So they apply for you. When you get the admission, you pay the deposit. When you pay the deposit, they send you your cars. When they send you your cars, you go to the embassy, apply for your visa, you get your visa, and you move. Wow, that's huge. That's that's it. That's it. That's I nice. started. I started my process in March. In March, late March, and I got my visa in July. Oh, that's that's quick. Okay, that's awesome, man. Oh, wow. So, that's really good. Okay. Um, quick question though. Um, did your grade, like when you graduated from, like your, your degree, was that like a um a yardstick for be, for you being able to get a master's, like you know? Coming out with the first class, a two one or two two. Was it like? Yeah, it, well, I didn't study in Nigeria. If you remember. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. So sort of like helped a lot. Well, I already had international experience, which was also a big. Um, yeah, of course, the, your, your grade matters, but trust me, most of this school, I, I don't think your grade matters, man. If you get the money to pay, you pay your money. You come here. 
Okay. As far as you don't, you are not like totally failed. You can do a masters, even with the pass. Even with the pass. Yeah, even if you have a degree, you can do a masters. I believe so. All, most of these people, most of these schools here, yeah, all they want is your money, man. Who cares about what you get. That's, yeah, that's cool, man. Thanks a lot, professor. Um. Spanky, I know you and John are basically the same thing, so you guys can tell me, talk about it, you know, together, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think I think the only difference with, with um, I and John's own is that I tried the first time, I did not get it, then I tried it again. So, yeah, maybe we'll give more details since, and then mine took um, a longer time in terms of, in terms of um, their processing. So, and I guess it's because of this um, um, Ukraine thing, because mm. they said it on their website that they are prioritizing um, visas for people in Ukraine over, so, so there might be delays. So, yeah, but um, for the visa routes that we came through, which is a um, global talent visa, you get the endorsement first. After the endorsement, you apply for the visa. The endorsement is what takes a lot of effort because you have to prove that you are either a leader in your field or you are a promising leader, right? Um, so based on the amount of evidence, so you basically need to provide evidence that you are one of these. And uh, not all of us, you, are not, you, you, don't, you don't get prepared for this thing. So you have to start going and start digging. Okay, I know I've done this before. Let me go and look for evidence for this. There are some things that you have done that you don't have evidence for. Yeah. So that, that's where the, that's where the, um, that's where it becomes really hard to do. And then getting those, uh, and then you need also three endorsements letter from people that you have worked with that, that, that are, that hold top positions in the same field. So um, for me, that was not that was not too much of a problem. Um, just writing the letter that was the you know getting the letter from the people that was the only uh, this thing. But getting people to write it that was not a problem. Then after that, you compile all your all your details and then you submit. So the first time I did it, I was thinking, oh, this, this should be easy, right? Let me just do one or two. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Just um, tabularly compiled something and just submitted. And then they sent me back a message that we are not, we can't, we can't give you this. But then one good thing is that they tell you that this is the reason why we're not giving you this. This is the reason, like details on how you can even improve yeah. your next application. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just used that details and I spent more time this time to get those evidence. Um yeah, so for they have like three criteria so you have to prove. For some, you just provide for some, you just have to show that you did the work. While mm. for others, you don't why for others, you have to show that you did the work and also you have to show the impact that work did. Yes. So um for some of them, because because I've been able to work at somewhere like Decagon where I train developers, just showing that you train developers is not enough. What is the impact of that you're training? Mm. You get so those that have gotten jobs at international companies and all of that, I had to just use some public publicly available information to show that okay, I did this work and this is the impact that's had and all of that. Then um, you have to show that you work at, um, I think you have to show that you high, you, you, you earn a high amount of salary. But I don't think I use that. I don't think I use that at all. Then there, there's also definition of work. You can't, you can't use a consultancy job. So if you're working as a consultant somewhere, that does not count. Um, then also if you are involved in public speaking, um you show that you did you actually you are you actually involved like you actually did the speaking and then also the how you show impact is how many people attended 
you get so you have to get that information and those are they should be verifiable information not just so oh, just if you, are, you can't write it on your own and just say these people attended you get then also if you have um if any of maybe i'll give you a talk somewhere that is that has been published somewhere like youtube um you can add that as well and then you have to show that how many views it has gotten so i did that but in, in that in that particular case i'm not sure i'm not sure the i'm not sure the amount of views really matters because the views on that video was like 48 views mm. yes um so i'm not sure that really mattered but then i added that then and then i've also been involved in a lot of um public speaking in different places both in lagos and in calabar so i added all of that along with pictures and all those things so I think that's that's what I used. Then also just to strengthen the so the second time I did it, because I already had that experience of rejection from I, I like I had to make sure that I had more than even more than enough information. Okay. So I went to get I went to get reference letter from people I've worked with before. Those that so when I, I said that I it was, it was not a problem for me to get people to do the endorsement letter for me. So I had more people even, but since they need only three, the other ones that I did not get endorsement letter from, I got reference letter from. Okay. So I added it to the, um, to the um, okay. application. Yeah. But then the reference letter has to show like your impact in terms of number, like, okay, this is what this person did, this is how we helped the company, not just that, oh, this person works here. You get so yeah. Got it. So I did those ones and then submitted it. Took quite a while. I think it took almost like four weeks to get a response. Uh, but then when I got the response, I was in Rwanda. For the um, I was in Rwanda when I got the response. So I tried to apply for the visa there, but I could not because you can only apply from a country where you have at least six months residence payments mm. but then i was there as a tourist so and then i've already planned other movement to kenya so i just decided to just um i started the process but then scheduled the time i was going to run, um do my biometrics at the time when i would arrive in lagos got it. so that was like a month after i got the um, endorsement so when i got the endorsement I applied for the visa um, then it took about uh, four or five weeks, I think. Took longer than expected, yeah. That's awesome. So, John, I know, is there a difference in your story? Please, eh? tell me a bit about your own and how it's different from David. Um, I think as David had mentioned, I came with the dual alternative visa as well. Um, when I did mine, I think I've not seen anybody who had done it. It was just I and the then. Yeah. So we just try to, you know, when you're touching the cold water, you don't know the temperature, you're just trying to test it. So um when I when we paid I was I was not sure I was going to do it. So I just paid and then did I missed the deadline. So they sent an email that gave me an additional 14 days. If I don't submit my document, I should just forget it. So and I started gathering documents. So mine, I, I use my own um, proofs, the, like the, my criteria, the criteria I use, like the criteria that I used, like I had to prove that so I was a potential leader. And then I use the fact that, you know, I had, I had the company I was running and the company had fraction like bank statements and that were also funded. So I, I submitted some safe, the safe with investors and then at that time when I was still building, I also had a job as well in the UK. So I was working with, it was a multinational in UK and Portugal. So luckily for me, my, um, one of the managing partners of the company was, was so nice. So he decided to write a very good letter for me as well. So with that, it was a very good, good one for me. And I also got a letter from, from another, uh, from the CEO of a company in Varuna as well that, um, I worked with them. So they also wrote a letter for me then. And uh, I think that was it basically. And then I had to prove that I was the one who built Coin So my Git Comic history, um, 
there are some evidences. I can't remember all this. I can't remember. It's been, it's been a while, yeah. So, so I submitted it and then I think they responded in two weeks or so thereabouts. Yeah. For the that's for the for the for the endorsement from the from the home from the home office. Then when I was done with that, I discovered that my passport had expired. <laughs> Ouch. And then there was no scarcity of there was scarcity of passports in, in Lagos. So I had to go and be looking for how we get passports. I eventually after I got the passport after a month. And then when I got the passports, I applied for the visa, but I was tired of Nigeria already. So I just did express. <laughs> So uh, I think the visa came. Okay, I got the visa on a Friday, but I got my passport Monday. So it, it just took like two days. Got it. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Dope, dope stuff. Anyhow, Sha, this this has been you know amazing. Um, you guys, I'm really grateful for you guys. You know, for the time that you guys are giving to me for this. Um, I'm hopeful you love the information you shared. Will be helpful for everyone that needs to you know learn about what it means to move to the UK, what they could learn about, all the experiences you had there, and maybe you could help them navigate a couple of things there. Um, I know um, every one of you have like a different experience. You guys work remotely, so it's not a big deal. Uh, Afosa, I probably need to talk to him about this. He works, you know, he had to get a job. I probably need to talk to him about the job and all. But the reality is everybody has a different experience. So, being able to like, you know, share that with everyone sort of like helps people in different stages understand what they could do based off, you know, what it means for them to move to the UK. So I'm um, really grateful for it. Um, I think this is going to be the end of the conversation, at least for now. Maybe we could have something else different. 